Yo, what the hell is up? Welcome back to Reviews with Jake, where I just got done watching Civil War. I'll be honest about this one. Going in, despite the fact that I'm a big fan of Alex Garland, I was a little skeptical going into this one, not only because the content and subject matter of this film is delicate to say the least, because I'm not overly compelled to sit through a movie showing a future that would not shock me if it came to fruition. It's like watching Idiocracy. Is it a comedy or is it a crystal ball? Why do I laugh less and less at that movie as its release date gets further and further back in the rearview mirror? But it's also because the movie didn't really look very Alex Garland-y. I've enjoyed this filmmaker and his work because all of it inspired a lot of high-level thought. It's always very cerebral, metaphorical. It's always had a message. So knowing that about about our filmmaker knowing that if he has a message he is going to push the envelope something fierce and he's taking on this subject matter right now I don't know. I was a little skeptical. But in Alex Garland, we trust. I know that this guy knows how to make a damn good movie, and he pulls it off once again, despite having a live landmine for a content matter. Let's start with the action sequences, because boy, oh boy, are they intense. They are so well helmed. A lot of filmmakers try this, but few succeed to put you right in the thick of the chaos. I mean, you feel right there on the front lines with the soldiers and the members of the press. You feel like you, too, can catch a stray bullet at any time. I mean, it was great. A lot of this comes from the fact that you literally get into the lens of a photojournalist right there next to the soldiers. I'll get into this more later, but this was such a good touch because you feel like you are right there in the thick of the madness. And the sound design, my god was it good. I mean, you got the full blast of an explosion to the full gun sounds. I mean, there are no stock sound effects here. These sound legit and they are real and they are threatening. You got a covert scenario where you're hearing every single footstep and breath as people are trying to be sneaky. And then you just have straight up silence at certain points. All the audio gets muted. I mean, it just had such a good helming of the soundscape. It all adds to this great experience to see and hear. I do not know if Alex Garland is remotely interested in stepping into the action genre, or frankly, if he wants to direct at all anymore with speculation saying that he might be done being behind the camera. This film shows that he can direct damn near anything he wants to. He has such a good control out of all things that you see in here. I mean, this guy is a true craftsman behind the camera. But he still packs that horror punch, less so as showing you spooky scares or something, but more so showing you harrowing imagery. So disturbing that's gonna stick with you a lot further than a jump scare ever will. No monsters, ghouls, robots, entities. It's just the pure pit of humanity at its absolute worst and most grotesque. He also once again excels in the set and location design process, something that he has demonstrated excelling in in movies like Annihilation. He takes the world that we know and flips it on its head completely in a way that very few people can envision and execute. He also did a good job building up our four core characters. The rest of the characters will get to that in a bit, but our main four here, they really do shine. I got a pretty good clear picture of their strengths, their weaknesses, their shortcomings, their traumas, anxieties, goals, all of that, I got a good sense of these four characters through methodical character development as well as strong performances. Lastly, I really enjoyed the score for this film. It's the same composer that always composes most of Alex Garland's work, and that was a nice common thread to kind of remind me whose work I'm watching, and every time that score came on, I enjoyed the hell out of it. Now, what I did not enjoy on the flip side was the soundtrack, the calling upon of pre-existing pre-written tunes throughout the course of this film. There's so many moments where there's a needle drop of a song and it just felt so weird and out of place and oftentimes took me out of the mood of the scenes that I was seeing. It just kind of took me right out of it. It was just just an odd decision that I just didn't understand. Most of my other drawbacks circulate around the fact that this film lacks a fair amount of context, objective, and overall world and plot development. They don't really give you a lot of information about this world, this version of America, the war, the reasons for the war, what are the rationales on each side, what are each fighting for, what do they believe in, who is an and who is not. In terms of a recipe to get your audience invested into this world, it's not really the go-to method I would choose to not give us this kind of context. But that being said, I get it. I get why they're so vague with this movie, because in times like these that are so delicate, a movie like this 
could be very, very dangerous, actually weaponized. If you fill the gaps too much and tell people what to think while watching events such as this unfold. They do such a good job of transporting us through the production of the film into this world. If we start to fill in some of the motives into our head as we're watching these characters do all this, this could be a very dangerous and powerful manipulation tool if used incorrectly. So I think I think it was the right and responsible and wise thing to keep things vague. But all that being said, even if it was the right decision to handle it this way, it does make getting invested into this movie very, very difficult. Like comparing it to 28 Days Later, which is another film that Alex Garland wrote. There's a lot of parallels here. You've got four people jammed into a car that don't really know each other, but they have one common goal and they're driving across the country in a wasteland post-apocalyptic world and they're encountering different things along the way, different towns, scenarios, people, everything. For 28 Days Later, you don't really need a lot of context because every one of these stops that they're going to are just filled with the same thing, bloodthirsty rage zombies. You don't really need to fill in the gaps anymore at each of these stops. They're all the same thing. They have the same common thread. But in this movie, you're dealing with people, not zombies, and people are a lot more complicated. They have different beliefs in the war and what their allegiances are. What are their morals? Are they good? Are they bad? Are they on this side or that side? There's so many different outcomes with each person that goes, and frankly, every stop that they make in this movie could be a movie in itself. So much meat on the bone, but instead we just get a quick highlight and then we're off and running again, and it just feels like it just jumps around so much as a result. And the conclusion of the film feels equal part Parts jumpy, less so about the conclusion, I guess, and more so what happens with a single character without diving into spoilers. It feels like if they didn't have such fragmented storytelling, what happens to this particular character wouldn't feel like it was completely out of left field. With all that being said, while I vastly prefer to have a film with a good story, good world building, good explanation and content and narrative function, I still feel like this movie works. Outside of the responsibility mention that I already talked about, I think that the lack of information in this film works the narrative because of the inclusion of the photojournalistic characters. If the main characters of this film were not the wartime photojournalists that they are, and the movie still lacked all of the context that it does, this movie just simply wouldn't work. It wouldn't. It's the fact that photojournalists' job is to be on the front lines in these dangerous situations to capture the brutality of man in a single photo, to not take a stance or take a side on anything, but more so just seize the frame. These are, frankly, in the grand fabric of humanity, is as important of a role as any. You think about all of the photos during wartime that are taken throughout history, and I think we can all agree that war times are probably collectively the darkest times in our existence. But someone had to be there to take a photo of that, especially before the modern era when everyone has a phone and a camera in their pocket. But someone had to be there right next to the action to snap a single frame. And them standing there with a the camera was really f dangerous and I don't think that that can be understated. Us tagging along over the shoulder of these people that make a living out of shooting first ask questions never in a movie and a story that does not answer your questions about why these things are happening it's just a brilliant combination. All in all, do I vastly prefer the other Alex Garland films? More cerebral, high level, interpretable, absolutely. The only real message to this movie, frankly, when you boil it all down is, hey, war f***ing sucks. But that said, does this movie still work very, very well despite the fact so many things are working against it? It absolutely does. In fact, it's probably as good, smart, methodical, and tactful as a film like this possibly could have been. I admittedly had doubts going into this one. I had a lot of doubts throughout most of the runtime, but still at the end of the day, Alex Garland pulls it off once again. Hats off to you, sir. But that is just me. What do you think? Let me know if you agree or disagree in the comments below. And make sure to subscribe to this channel to stay up to date with new reviews coming real soon. Stay safe. Thanks for checking in.